All right, hey y'all, this is Mr. Gibson with your next lesson in cryptography, and today we're going to be talking about the auto key cipher, which is basically just a strengthened version of the Visionaire cipher. So we've previously talked about Blaze de Visionaire, uh, who is miscredited with creating the Visionaire cipher, but who actually created the auto key cipher that we're going to be talking about today. So let's take a look. The auto key cipher starts out pretty similarly to the Visionaire cipher. We need a keyword. We're going to call it a primer. We're going to see that this keyword by itself will not be the running key stream, but um, it'll be part of it and it's going to start the, start the key stream. Uh, our plain text, we're going to use the accept the greater challenge, the NCSSM school motto, and we're going to go ahead and encrypt that. So here's how we do that. We start by taking our primer. And the way that we create our running key is by taking the primer and putting the plain text on the end. So let's think about that. If you're creating the message, you have access to both of those pieces of information. You have the primer, which is an, ag an agreed upon secret between you and the receiver. And then you are the one that has the plain text. So you can also append that to the end of your primer to create the running key. And then we will take the running key and put that over the top of our plain text and now we can use our tabular recta to encrypt character by character to create the ciphertext. So this should be familiar by now. We won't go through all the details, but you can verify that that ciphertext message is correct using the tabular recta. So that's not too bad, but we're going to see this actually offers a lot of security. We'll see that at the end of this lesson that this does a really good job of disguising individual character frequencies um, that we've seen are the weaknesses of our monoalphabetic ciphers. And we've not yet seen that other polyalphabetic ciphers are still discernible when we use um, single character frequency analysis. But with the auto key, it's actually a lot harder to crack this thing. We're gonna need a lot of trial and error, a lot of manual work, it's a lot harder to automate. So this is really why the auto key became kind of the standard encryption and visionaire to a lesser extent, um, up until really the late 1800s and into the first world war. So let's look at how deciphering is gonna be a little bit different. So if you think about when you're deciphering a message, you don't have the plain text. That's the whole point. So you can't create the entire running key at the beginning, but you can get started. You've got your primer, you've got your ciphertext. So we've got a new message here we're working with. And we'll take that to at least get the running key started. So we've taken the primer and that's all we have in the running key. But as we start to decipher a character at a time, we can move each plain text character that we create onto the end of the running key as we learn more. So we can see the first plain text character we knew was A, we append that to the running key. And then the next plain text character we get is T, we append that to the running key. Then we get another T, and then we get an A, and then we get a C. And now we have enough of the running key that we can decipher the entire ciphertext. So we can stop appending things and finish out the decryption. And we can see that our message was the phrase attack at dawn. So it's a little bit more complicated. This is the first one and really the only one of our tabular recta based ciphers that we are not able to create the entire running key at the beginning of the deciphering process. We have to continually update the running key as we decrypt more and more characters. And that's the auto key uh, encryption process. Let's take a look at how it has an impact on security. So going back to our tried and true example text, I've taken Pride and Prejudice with the primer of Unicorn and use the auto key cipher to create it as a cipher text. And this is what the distribution of characters look like. I've kind of zoomed in on it. Um, we can see that every single letter has a frequency of between two and a half and 5%, which is very different from what we've seen with Caesar or even our Visionaire cipher. This is a lot more uniform of a distribution. And that's really the goal of these polyalphabetic ciphers is to get this distribution as flat as possible. If every single character was equally represented, it'd be around 3.8%. And we can see we're kind of zeroing in on that as we've learned about Trithemius to Visionaire and now AutoKey. These distributions just keep, to keep getting flatter and flatter. Every single character seems to be approaching that 3.8%. And that's the goal, because if we can make every ciphertext letter equally represented, it becomes impossible for us to figure out what the plain text message was that created it. So it's gonna, we're going to see it's really, really difficult to do that with perfect security, but this auto key cipher is going to get us as close as we can with these classical methods 
um, to really good security method uh, until we introduce modern cryptography uh, with computers. So that's the auto key cipher. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.